this is what holds the cutter on my 9-inch South Bend lathe. It's called the tool post. It's got some adjustability. You can adjust the tool height by moving it back and forth in that dished washer. Overall, though, it's a little bit on the scrawny side, and you can't really hold a wide variety of tools in it, and to be truthful, the adjustments aren't super easy. So to mitigate some of these issues, I'm replacing it with what's called a quick change tool post, and this just accepts a variety of cartridges with different types of tools in them. Now the threaded adapter that comes with the tool post to attach it to your lathe is purposefully oversized, so that's why we're here today. We're going to cut it down to fit in the T-slot on the south bend, taking measurements so that I can figure out how much to cut. Now this project will be done all on manual machines, however, I always love the opportunity to model something out in Fusion 360. I feel like it's good practice and it gives us a nice visual reference to follow when we're cutting the part. Now a cool feature of Fusion 360 is its ability to make blueprints, and this is really cool for taking a digital design and putting it in a medium that we can use in the real world. I'm no expert at making blueprints, so I'm not going to tell you how to do it because I honestly don't know, but it's a fun tool to play with, and you can then print it out and take it into the shop with you. It's like a CAD model, except you can get it covered in grease from your workbench. And because I have them, I'm using my surface plate and my height gauge to scribe out the lines to cut on the part. I'm starting with a center line here so I can measure equally the width of the overall part. We need to bring it down to an inch and a quarter wide total. A quick idiot check with calipers confirms that I did scribe at least mostly right. With the part mounted in the milling machine, we'd go ahead and start taking cuts to hog off the material and bring it down to its overall width. I'm using a two flute cutter here that's three quarters of an inch in diameter. I actually got this end mill buried in a box of broken end mills that came from a local machine shop that was closing down. That was a gift to me from Greg of Greg's Garage, so go check him out and tell him I said thanks. I experimented with a bit of a different strategy on the other side of the part. I'm using a four flute corn cob roughing end mill and we're going along the sides like this. Now, this worked really well for a great finish, but I had to take more passes. I also didn't realize until seeing this video that that parallel was at a slight angle, which drives me nuts. The surface finish is pretty decent on both sides of the part. It's fine for what it is. I think in the future I'll go with the four flute end mill, but held like in the first side. I scribed lines onto this part for the shoulders of the T-nut just to kind of keep me sane. However, I'm going with more of an instrument guided approach here. I've touched off with the end mill on the top and the sides of the part, and then I can use the mill to measure in the cuts I need to take. After deburring the part and kind of breaking a lot of those corners with a hand file and giving it a good wipe down to get the blue off of it, I'm pretty pleased with how it looks, although what's more important is, well, how it fits. I think I'm going to have to reward myself with a beer later for that first try fit right there. With the tool now mounted, I can start making chips on this lathe, so be sure to check back soon and see what I cut. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos, I do a lot of home machining like this. Anyway, thanks for watching.